Hey kids, Mr. Stanley here. I'm so excited that you have joined me for Children's Church again today. We're going to get started the way we always get started with a time of prayer requests and praises. So in just a second, I'm going to give you about 15 seconds of silence. And during that time, I want you to say out loud three things. Number one, if you have had something really good happen in the last week, something that's made you laugh, something that's made you smile, something that's made you really happy, I want you to say that thing out loud, and we're going to tell God thank you for that thing. Number two, if you know anyone in your lives who are sick or sad or hurting, or we just want to ask God to take care of that person, I want you to say their name out loud, and we're going to ask God to be with that person and to let them know that God is with them and that God loves them. And then number three, if you are struggling with anything in your life right now, if there's something in your life causing you to be sad or anxious or upset or overwhelmed, I want you to say that thing out loud, and we're going to pray that God will help you with that thing. All right, so I'm going to give you about 15 seconds of silence. I want you to say those things out loud, and then we're going to lift those things up to God in prayer. All right, you can start saying those things now. All right, great job, kids. I couldn't hear what you said through the camera that is recording this video, but guys, I promise you, God heard each and everything that you mentioned. So we're going to lift those things up in prayer now. So if you'll join me, put your hands together, bow your heads, and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come to Children's Church to worship you and to learn more about you. But God, as we begin Children's Church, we want to tell you thank you for all those things that you blessed our lives with, for those things that make us happy, those things that make us smile. God, we tell you now, thank you, thank you, thank you. God, for the people in our lives who are sick or sad or hurting, or we just want you to be with them and take care of them, God. We lift those people up to you and we pray that you would help them and that you would take care of them, God, and that you would let them know that you are right there with them and that you love them. And God, for each and every kid or adult that's watching this that's struggling with something, if something's making them upset or sad or angry or disappointed, God, I pray that you would be with them, that you would help them with that thing. Lord, you would walk with them as they figure out how to handle that thing. And Lord, you would let them know that you are right there beside them and that you love them. God, be with us now as we go through Children's Church. Help us to have a lot of fun and learn a lot about you. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Great job, kids. So we just opened with prayer with our praises and our prayer requests, and now we move on to another prayer. But this is a special prayer. If you've been here before, what is it called? You're right. It's called the Lord's Prayer. And the reason this prayer is important, the reason this prayer is special, the reason we pray it every single Sunday, whether you're in children's church, the gathering, or traditional worship here at Bluff Park, is because this prayer is a prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. One day, Jesus' disciples, his best friends, they said, Jesus, how should we pray? Will you teach us how to pray? And Jesus taught them to pray using this prayer. All right? And we believe that we are disciples of Jesus. If you believe in Jesus and you're trying to follow Jesus and do the things Jesus tells us to do, then we're disciples of Jesus too. We're Jesus' friends. And so we think, we believe that this prayer can help us learn to pray as well. So we're going to pray it together now. If you know it, it starts Our Father, and I want you to say it with me. If you don't know it, just listen. And as you come to Children's Church or church more and more, you're going to pick it. Uh, and I guarantee you in a couple of weeks, months, maybe even years, you'll be able to say this prayer as well. So let's go to God again in prayer. Remember, it starts Our Father. Put our heads together, bow our heads, close our eyes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Great job. Now we move on to our Bible story for the day. If you were here with us last week, you know we talked about Mother's Day. And I hope you all treated your mothers really well last Sunday and throughout the week like we talked about, right? Did you do it? You did it. Give me two big thumbs up. Yes. Good job. All right, so if you remember before that, though, we talked about the birthday of the church. We call it Pentecost. Whenever Peter, the lead disciple, he stood up and he told a crowd of lots and lots of people all about Jesus. All right, he told them about Jesus. And on that day, on Pentecost, 3,000 people believed in Jesus. And we believe that that's the beginning of the church. That's why we call Pentecost the birthday of the church. All right, you remember that? Okay, so... We move on for our story today. Those 3,000 people and the disciples and some other followers of Jesus who believed in him during their life, they go out and they start telling everyone about Jesus. And they start loving people in Jesus' name. And they start helping people in Jesus' name. And when they do that, more and more and more people believe in Jesus. And the church starts getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right? And just like during Jesus' life, if you've come to Children's Church, you know we've talked about how most of the time Jesus went around helping people, telling people about God, healing people, doing miracles, and most of the people enjoyed that. They liked that Jesus did that. They liked what Jesus was saying, but there were always these people. There was always some people who did not like what Jesus was doing. They especially didn't like that Jesus was saying, God loves everyone, and you need to love everyone. And they didn't like that Jesus was saying he was the Son of God. All right? And those people eventually killed Jesus on the cross, you know? You remember that? So the same thing happens in the church, all right? As the church gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're saying all the same things that Jesus said, that we should love everyone, that God loves everyone, that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, there were a lot of people who believed in those things, and that's why the church was getting bigger. But there were some people who did not like what the church was saying. They didn't like that the church was getting bigger. And they decided they wanted to stop the church from growing. They wanted to get rid of the church. All right? And one of the main ones to do that was a guy named King Herod. All right? Can you say King Herod? All right. King Herod started saying, I got to get rid of this thing. And he said, the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to start making fun of Christians and encouraging other people to make fun of Christians. I'm going to arrest some Christians and throw them into jail. I'm going to make it illegal to hold a church service in your house. I'm actually even going to kill a couple of Christians to try and make an example of them. All right? So he starts doing these things. And guys, it doesn't work. The church just keeps growing and growing and growing. And so Herod says, I got to do something big. I got to do something big that's going to stop this thing. So he goes, I'm going to arrest and possibly kill the most important person in this church, the head of this new church. You know who it is? It's Peter, right? Remember the guy that stood up? He talked and 3,000 believed on the church's birthday. Herod arrests Peter, and he throws Peter in jail, all right? He throws Peter in jail, and again, he's thinking about killing Peter, all right? And the church is devastated. They're so incredibly sad that Peter is in prison. They really want to help Peter, but they can't help Peter because they can't break him out of prison, all right? And so you know what they do? They can't think of anything else to do, so they do something super important. They start to pray. The Bible says the whole church begins to earnestly pray for Peter. Basically means they were praying a lot for Peter. All right, so Peter's in prison. And again, I told you the church couldn't go and break Peter out. Herod was kind of afraid that they might try and do that. So when Peter went to prison, Herod actually chained his hands and his legs to the wall so that he could not leave. He also put 16 guards in there with Peter, which is a ton of guards for one person, right? He had 14 guards outside of Peter's prison cell, and he actually had two guards in the prison cell with Peter chained to him as well. So Peter is chained to the wall by his legs and by his arms, and he's chained to two guards in there as well. There is no way Peter can get out of this, right? He does. All right, so... Peter is asleep one night, and all the guards are asleep too, all right? And in the middle of the night, Peter wakes up. And it should be dark in his cell, but it's blindingly bright in his cell. And Peter looks up, and there is an angel standing there in his cell. And the angel says, Peter, get up and follow me. 
And again, the guards stay asleep. But Peter stands up, the chains fall off his arms. The chains fall off his legs. And the chains attaching him to the guards, they fall off as well. And Peter stands up. He puts on his cloak and he starts walking and following the angel. And the guards don't wake up. The Bible says God put them into a deep sleep. And so Peter goes to the entrance to his jail cell. And it's locked, but the angel touches it and it flies open. And so they walk out, and here's the other 14 guards, all still asleep, and they walk around them. They walk all the way to the front of the jail, and no one wakes up to stop Peter. And there is a giant iron gate at the front of this jail. Just in case a prisoner ever escaped from their cell, they still couldn't get out because there was a giant iron gate, probably with lots of locks. And the angel walks up to it, the angel touches it, whoosh, it flies open, and Peter walks out of the prison into the city. And the Bible says the minute that they got out of the prison into the city, boom, the angel disappears. And so Peter's free. He's outside and you know where he goes? He knows there is a house where a lot of Christians meet in the city. And so he runs. He might tiptoe. He might sneak because he doesn't want to get caught, but he makes it to the house. And when he gets there, he starts knocking on the door. Kind of quietly, probably, because he doesn't want to draw attention. But he's knocking on the door. And the Bible says that one of the people inside hears the knocking. And her name, it was a girl, her name was Rhoda. Can you say Rhoda? All right, Rhoda. Rhoda comes to the door. And Rhoda's probably a little scared. Because remember, the king has been arresting Christians. He has just arrested Peter. And so she says, who is it? And Peter answers her, it's me, Peter. And Rhoda is so excited. She probably went, what? That's amazing. I hear Peter. Peter's here. She turns around and runs back to tell everyone. But what does she forget to do? She forgot to open the door. Peter is still standing outside. But Rhoda runs into the middle of the house and she starts saying, Peter is at the door. And you know what everyone says? Rhoda, you're crazy. Rhoda, Peter is not at the door. Peter is in jail. There's no way he's at the door. And Rhoda says, guys, I promise I heard his voice. I know his voice. Peter is at the door. And they still say, Rhoda, you're crazy. But she keeps insisting he's at the door. And finally, probably just to make her realize that she's wrong, they say, okay, let's go to the door and make sure. And so they all go to the door. They open it up. And who's standing there? Peter is standing at the door, and they come inside, and they're so incredibly excited, and they thank God that God has helped Peter escape from prison. And then Peter goes on, and we might tell another story about Peter next week. We might actually move on to Saul or Paul, but Peter keeps telling people about Jesus, and the church keeps growing and growing and growing. All right, good story? Guys, I love that story. That is such a cool story. But we always talk about at the end of a story, the so what question. What does this story have to do with you? What can you and I learn from this story? Because when we read the Bible, whether it's a Bible story or a Bible verse, we're supposed to learn from that story. Learn something about God or how God wants us to live our lives. So here's what I want you to think about this week from this story. All right. Peter got thrown in prison. Peter got thrown in prison with 16 guards. He's chained to the wall. There's nothing the church could do to help them, but they wanted to help him. What did they do for Peter? They prayed for Peter, guys. And I think that's so incredibly important. The church chose to pray for Peter, to ask God to help Peter when they had no way to help. All right. And guys, I want to encourage you and myself and anyone else who's watching this video this morning, I want to encourage you to follow the example of the church. At the beginning of every children's church, we did it today already. I ask you guys, if you know anyone that is sick or sad or hurting, and I want you to name them out loud so that we can ask God to take care of them. And so, guys, I want to encourage you to continue to do that, but not just on Sunday morning. We're not only able to pray in church on Sunday morning or Wednesday night, guys. I want to encourage you to start trying to do that in your lives throughout the week outside of church. I want to encourage you to pray for people you know who are sick or sad or hurting or in trouble or you just want to ask God to take care of them. 
going to give you an example of something that my family has been trying over the years. We've tweaked it a little bit throughout the years as Katie and Gavin, my kids, have gotten older. But something we do is every night before we go to bed, we sit down as a family and we each, the four of us, we say something that we're thankful for, that we want to tell God thank you. And then each one of us mentions someone we know that we want to ask God to take care of them, whether they're sick, whether they are in trouble, whether we notice that they're sad, we try and pray for someone every night before we go to bed. And maybe that's something your family wants to try. But guys, today, I want to encourage you to try this week, at least two times this week. Can you do that for me? Two times this week, outside of Sunday morning or Wednesday night or during this children's church video, I want to encourage you to take some time to pray for people you know who are sick or sad or hurting. And guys, I believe God hears every single prayer that you ask and that God will do everything he can to help those people. All right, so can I encourage you to pray at least two times this week? If you can do that for me, give me two big thumbs up. Guys, you are awesome. That is Children's Church today. Come back next week. Like I said, we might do another Peter story, but we might move on to a guy named Saul. Or we might even talk about a guy named Philip. I haven't decided which one we're going to do yet, so you'll have to come back next week to find out. All right, let's close in prayer. Thanks again for coming to Children's Church. Let's put our hands together, bow our heads, close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for watching over us today. We thank you for this time that we've been able to come together and learn about you. And we pray today that you would help us to learn from this story that we just heard. When Peter was in trouble, the church prayed, and you were able to help Peter, God. God, I pray that you would help each one of us to spend time this week praying for people in our lives who are sick or sad or hurting or just in trouble or just people that we want you to be with, God. I pray that you would help us to spend time with you praying for others. God, we love you and we thank you for this day. And I pray you be with each and every person watching this video, that you would walk with them throughout this week, that you would lead them, guide them, show them the way to go, and help them to have a great week. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.